Good evening, Jill Folk, and welcome back to Franbo, to Screamly Jolly and to Reality. Once again, turns out last time we were only on the outskirts of Ethersta, not strictly speaking reality. And speaking of last time, we crashed the airship. We can't find its woods anywhere, we can't actually find the spaceship anywhere. And as usual, I wonder, are we really in reality, or is this just another nightmare? Wow, Mr. Midnight, do you see the moon? It is huge. Yes, I see it. Our home is in that direction, too. All right, the cat can still speak, so either I'm still insane or still in unreality. A red bicycle. Is this Edward's bicycle or mine? Could in fact be both. I'm starting to th think Fran is just stock raving mad. Oh my goodness, this is our street, Kitty. Hazel Street. Yes, it is. Hazel Street, not Hazel Street. So yeah, I think it will turn out she's just insane. It would be cool if all, all this were real, though. Cool to a degree. And here we are. This looks so much more grey than I remember. Well, I hope Aunt Grace will be happy to see me. But I, do, but I digress. It remains to be seen. Aunt Grace, hello. That's a very tiny door. Maybe she's not at home, dear. Do you have the key to go inside? No, I don't have it, Kitty. But I know there's a hidden key somewhere. I just need to remember where. Hmm. Let's find it. How about under plant pots? Keys are frequently hidden under plant pots. Oh, I'm sorry, little insects. Don't run away. Oh. Can I take the other one? No? Oh, I'm sorry, little insect. Don't run away. Oh. Ah, no key. What's this? A note. It says, I took the key. Signed, Fran. Fran, that's me. But I haven't taken the key. And I didn't write that note. This is also confusing. What should I do now? Yep, I'm mad. Mud. Oh, that's the window to my room. Hmm. Maybe that's where we're supposed to go. What about it? What about the this? Come here, kitty. You must climb and go through the window. I couldn't find a key. It seems that I already took it. You already took the key, but you don't have it? That sounds very strange. Yes, it's very strange. I only found a note that I don't remember writing. But now, in order to get inside, kitty, you must climb and open the door for me. Oh, all right then. Wish me luck. You can do it, Kitty. Be careful. Danger Cat! Mr. Midnight, do you hear me, Kitty? Open the door. Well, shite. Fran, I can't believe you're still alive. Where were you? Done. I'm, I'm fine. Please don't take me back to the asylum. I've been looking for you a long time now. How did you escape? That's not your business. Leave now, please. Mm, but why are you outside the house? Well, I don't have the key, but Mr. Midnight is inside now. He climbed and went through the window of the second floor, sir. Mr. Midnight? Isn't that your missing cat? Yes, but we found each other in the end. Sir, may I ask why you're here? I came to meet Miss Grace. I have something very important to tell her. I think he's not at home, sir. Well, it might be better this way. You'll have to come with me, then. No, I won't leave my kitty again. Let's wait until he opens the door. Fran, I don't believe your cat is in the house. That is impossible. I'm telling you the truth. He is inside. He will open the door in a minute. Stop it, Fran. Face reality. Your cat is dead. You must come with me now. Well, poop. And he opens the door. <sighs> the madness continues. Can I operate things? I'm, s I'm sorry, Fran. I don't want to hurt or scare you. I'm just worried about Mr. Midnight, sir. You made me leave him. Is he really alive? 
But of course it is, sir. Why would I lie about this? This feels so wrong. Do you know, Fran, I was fired from the asylum because I knew too much. I have found things that I do not understand that I do not understand yet. I really thought you were dead. Look at these documents. Family murder on ha Family murder on Hay Street. The bodies were, were perfectly sliced. Martin and Lucia Bo Daynard were found early this week brutally murdered in their residence on Hay Street. The, investigate, the investigating police officer, Marco Humer, said, It seems that the bodies were perfectly sliced, which would cause quick, instantaneous death. Also, there were no signs of struggle in the house, so the victims must have been caught completely by surprise and were un unable to fight back. The police interrogated Grace Daynard. Lucia's twin sister, but the police didn't find any useful information. The youngest in the family, Fran Bow, was found in the woods one day after her parents' murder. She froze to death. What? Dear Gladys, let the newspaper know about Fran Bow. She was found in the woods, frozen to death. She ran away from home after finding about her finding out about her parents' murder. Beloved Fran Bow, Fran is now free from pain. We hope you reunite with your family in heaven. That is very odd. Surely we spoke with the doctor on the asylum. I no longer remember the first chapters, I'm afraid. But I'm not dead, sir. This is all lies. I see that. But I also found about your medicine was switched. Yes, we did notice that. You were giving a new variant, a new variant of duotin, a variant. When I looked at it in the laboratory, the level, of, the levels of ectoplasm platin were too high. That can't be good. Ectoplatin creates a door between the subconscious and the conscious. The problem is, if the ectoplomatin, I can't speak today, is too high, the door will be too wide. And that can create a great confusion in your brain. A great confusion in my brain? I, I am a bit confused yet. But that's because of all the new things that I can see and feel. What do you mean, Fran? I can see the ultra reality, sir. Oh dear. And also travel in other words. Reality? That must be a consequence of the duty, nothing more. That is not true. If I had some more medicine, I would show you. You don't need that medicine anymore. Besides, it's all in your head, Fran. All in my head, you say? Then I may be able to control it. I mean that you are imagining things, that's all. I tried to tell my mother the truth, but father would harm her as well. I don't want my father playing with his knife again. My arm, sir. Oh, did your father harm, harm you with his knife, Doctor? What? Who told you that? Interesting. So although she might be insane, schizophrenic and hallucinating, she did find out, some objectively find something out that she couldn't have known. Unless she found that out earlier. What? Who told you about that? You did. Or didn't you, sir? I haven't said anything about it. Oh my goodness, that is true. Oh, please, let's focus. But you're not listening to me, sir. We need to find out the truth. I wonder who is behind all this. The nurses, Oswald, who knows? I do know, sir. It's the big, big black monster, Remo. He took my parents, and now he haunts me. He wants me dead. Oh, I wish I stayed in Nethurster with Palantras and the Great Wizard. What are you talking about? Please, Fran, I'm serious. I'd have said goodbye to Itwood or Palantras, and my kitty is all alone. Palantras? Itwood? Please, Fran. Palantras is the doctor of Ithurster. He's a flying creature. Very fluffy, sir. And Itwood is my faithful friend. He brought me home with his machine. It seems you have been living inside a fairy tale. It wasn't good all the time, sir. The twins are gone because of me. I saw myself killing Mr. Midnight, and I saw mother and father too. The twins? What twins? The girls that were attached to one another. Attached, you say? That reminds me of the Claude and Mia case. Two girls in the asylum that claimed to see a creature named Edward or something. Edward? I think you're misunderstanding, sir. It's Edward. But what happened to these girls? Dr. Oswald was experimenting now. On them. He sewed them together. Mostly to see the reaction of the DNA, but nothing happened. A few months later, they died. 
there. My bodies were thrown inside a well. Ah, the well you reach when, when you t take duotin inside of the house earlier. That is awful, sir. You can't make the, take me back to the asylum. Don't worry, I won't. I brought you with me so you can help me. Interesting. Maybe we can find something that will lead us to just responsible for all this disgrace. Thank you, Doctor. Maybe Palantros was right about you. You are not a bad doctor. You are just an old man following the rules. Following the rules? Well, not tonight. Whew, my throat is parched. His voice is really straining. Here we are. But this is but this is the cemetery, sir. What are we doing here? You will see. Follow me. Oh, she looks so sad. Don't be sad. We're going to a cemetery. It's a place of peace. How? Hello, stone woman. Are you sleepy? <laughs> she shed right back up. This is your parents' resting place, and also yours. But why did you bring me here, sir? I'm sorry, Fran, but things are how they are. Your parents were killed. No one who killed them can make things right. What do you mean by right, sir? I mean that if we can find the guilty ones, we will have justice. Use the law to punish such behavior and prevent others from being harmed. I understand, sir. And for what did you need my help? To find clues and evidence, we need to open the coffins. All right, sir. I'll help. Maybe the deal worms came already. Who? Mm, all right. Uh, we're gonna have to find shovels to dig. I'll go left and you can go right. I'll see you in a few minutes, right here, all right? Yes, Dr. Dunn, see you home. Soon, I mean. Not home. That would be daft, since you just took me from there. Am I rambling? I wonder what the lady was hidden behind her hands. Is it a little bug? Surely, Fran, surely. I have to... Oh, God. I have to find a shovel to dig in to see my parents. <coughs> God. My voice. Ah, Martin Bow, Lucia Bow, Fran Bow. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, Smoothkin. <laughs> oh, lovely little bear. You must take care of my parents. Haven't you rested enough already? Yes, it's time for the dead to rise. No name, no flower, maybe nobody is down there. Maybe the cow were from the old, mo old movie. Oh, it's stuck. Must be the shovel storage room. <laughs> well, there must be a way to open it. What's this crack here? No, oh, it's stuck. Blah, 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 blah. Hmm. 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 I don't have access to duotin, which kind of limits what I can do right now. Uh, I lost my key. God damn it. I wonder what would happen if I find a key. Well, you had it just a moment ago. No, 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 no. That is, that is ridiculous. <laughs> that will never work. Well, this is... Hmm... Ah! <laughs> a crowbar! If the doctor doesn't mind, I take it. Drive away, Fran. Live free. Away from doctors and asylums and cats. Be your own woman. Alright. Alright, Squire. That's it. Let's get this door open. Did it work? Shh! You have to keep it down, Fabio. But I'm not Fab Fabio, I'm Fran. Hello, little pinecone. Oh, oh my goodness, a giant. Oh, please, don't be scared. I won't harm you. Or thought snow joints could see us. <laughs> I think I can see you because I have very big eyes, you see. He does really. Oh, see, I'm Sebastian, by the way. The tribe's collector. The tribe's collector? That sounds exciting. Uh, oh no, we're trying to find some shiny leather. We need it for the mating ritual. Oh, that's quite interesting. Shiny leather. Hmm. Yeah, last year we used old human skin. 
the little worms want me back. So we are looking for something more synthetic. Well, I hope you can find the leather. Um, Sebastian, would you do me a favor? It depends on the fire giant miss. I was thinking you could open the door for me from the inside. Or could do that. But we help each other instead. Bring me a piece of leather and I'll open the door or I'll join this. But where will I ever find that? Huh, alright, I'll see what I can do. Damn, <laughs> the, la the dialects are mixing together. Well, that's, that's, this puzzle seems fairly obvious. Trust the old Kneef. Sorry, Doctor. Whoops, what a big hole I made. Well, I have leather now. Fran, Fran, Fran. You're a maniac. You should have used the back seat. You'll be hours recently noticed. Now you're gonna get in trouble. <laughs> oh, thank you, John. This or tribe, the Pinesillus will be happy. And now I'll open the door for you. Just a second. Right, Sebastian. Sebastian. I'm, I'm all right, Miss. Yes. Good. Well, thank you. You opened the door. You're welcome, John, Miss. Uh, Fabio. Uh, I have to go, Miss. Good night. Hey, Fabio, wait for me. I have the leather. You're gonna mate now. You're gonna mate. Dirty, dirty pine cone. There's nothing I can use. I'm sure there's something. Nothing? There's nothing! Well, I'm outraged. Well, that was more successful. Oh, clicked past this comment. Well, let's have the good doctor then. Oh, so serious. Well, now we'll have to come up with something to open the coffins. Is that a voice I had like five minutes ago for him? Huh? They're stuck. I had a crowbar in my car just in case, but I couldn't find it. No, I took the crowbar, sir. I needed to open the door. Do you want it back? No need, Fran. But can you do the honors of opening the coffins? Alright, sir. I'll open them. Alright. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Hi, Mom. Well, dang. Your hey, mother, you're so skinny. And a bit too much, I would say. And bam. Ah. Woo! I'm not in the coffin. Great. But that can't be my kitty. Because Mr. Midnight is home. Unless I'm insane. Huh. Oh my goodness. Father, the deal one took your eyes. We're, we're a well world preserved otherwise. Did you see anything that could bring us closer to the killer? No, sir. I just feel really bad doing this. Seeing my parents like this. Also, that dead cat is not my cat. They're lying. Fran, I told you. Your cat was missing, and maybe this is actually your cat. It can't be, sir. I did find my kitty. You have to believe me. Take me home and I'll show you. Please. Alright, Fran. I'll take you back home. I'll take care of this later. I still need to find some clues. Thank you, sir. Let's go. Such a nice old fogey. Oh dear. I just teleported him. Vanished in the hands of darkness. You have no manners. I'm not afraid of you anymore. I've taken away from you the light. The one you love. The one you respect. And the one you desire to love you. Ah. 
Ah, not my eyeballs. I need them to see. Curse you, Remus. Well, now I'm not in trouble for plundering the car of that leather. You broke it, little girl. The house of madness invites you inside. You want to find those you love. In darkness, you must wake up. Wake up now, friend. Wake up. Was that scary enough? I tried my best. <laughs> the house of madness. Um. Ah, shite. Aunt Grace, is that you? My darling, you finally woke up. You're at home, my dear. Am I, am I really? That's incredible. Yeah. About that. I'm so happy to see you. Please give me a hug. Soon, my darling. And where's Mr. Midnight? Your cat? Well, you know, he ran away after what he did. What? He ran away? But what did he do? Well, your cat killed my sister and your father. He's a traitor. That is not true. It can't be true. He didn't do it. Oh, it doesn't matter if it's true or not. In the end, we must have a guilty one, right? But you can't blame Mr. Midnight. He's my best friend. Oh, but it's easier to blame someone else than taking responsibility, isn't it? I will always take responsibility for my action, even if they are not so good. What a good girl. Rest now, my darling. You need it. But, but Aunt Grace, don't leave me. Why am I shamed to the bed? Because your hands do bad things when they're untied. What are you talking about? Uncuff me now. I have to go find Mr. Midnight. Little, little shining friend, don't you worry about our lies. The seeker of the truth will always die because the evil will never hide. Little, little shining friend, go to bed and sleep tight and forget this pain inside your mind. You were selected to suffer, to cry and to hate. But the darkness wants to free you from all this disgrace. Sleep tight, darling friend. Ah. Oh no, don't leave me here, Aunt Grace. Please come back, please. Why is she acting so strange? Why blame Mr. Midnight? Kitty couldn't have killed my parents. His claws are tiny and soft. I hope he's fine, but what should I do now? Tick tock, tick tock. Crazy sound, it never stops. Now that I think about it, the clockmaker said that time is a late reality. Maybe there is another version of me in this room in another time. Or I'm just imagining things. But if it's true, I could make contact with her. Dr. Dern said that everything's in my head. Well, dear viewer, I think I will end the episode here. Not sure how long I recorded, but I think this is about 20 minutes and we're at such a brilliant place to end episode. And what a wonderful one we've had. Even if it took its toll on my voice. So yeah, I think we're in some kind of evil reality created by Remus to try us, to try and make us give up. But we can't do that, can we? With so much to see, so much to explore. I hope you will join me, for, join me for it. So until then, thank you for visiting, and good night.